Hey guys, so today, instead of doing like a, a scale lesson or, uh, or something like that, we're actually going to take a look at a little piece of equipment. Um, this right here is the Pinnacle Distortion Pedal by Wampler, and it's one of my uh, favorite distortion pedals. I have it on all the time. Um, if you guys are ever, you know, if we're ever doing a lesson together or something and you hear a really high gain distortion sound, uh, chances are pretty good. It's either this or, or maybe the rat. Those are my two kind of go-tos at the moment. So I thought I'd just kind of walk you through the controls so you guys have an idea of um, how I'm getting the sounds that I'm getting when you're hearing me play, whether it's on YouTube or if we're on a Zoom lesson or, or in person, whatever it might be. Um, so let's take a look at it. So um, before we get into that, uh, just so you can hear the amp that I'm using, this is my Fender Hot Rod DeVille. Uh, I'm running into the Torpedo Captor X, which is a new... Um, piece of uh, technology that I've just got my hands on. I'm still kind of getting familiar with it. So I'm going to do another demo of that specifically a little bit later on once I've had a chance to mess with it for a while. Um, but the, uh, so the Fender is not actually producing any sound really from the speakers and the amp. It's going into this um, amp uh, cabinet simulator and that's going right in the computer here. So my clean sound coming from the Fender going into the uh, Captor X sounds like this. <laughs> And now, if we switch on the pinnacle, we instantly get something like this. Yeah. So, uh, let's, let's walk through what some of these controls are. This is uh, how I have it set up most of the time. I tend to set my volume maybe a little bit above unity gain. Um, Unity gain, by the way, for anybody who's not familiar with that, just means um, the same level, the same volume as the clean sound, or the same uh, volume as when the pedal is off. So I usually boost it just a little bit, and I have my gain typically set around here. Sometimes I'll go up a little bit higher there. And we have a couple of other controls here. These other two knobs, this is the tone knob, which is just an overall brightness control. And then we have the contour. So a contour is a, probably the only control on here that you don't tend to see a lot on pedals. It's really like a, a mid control. So it changes the way that the um, the mids behave. So for example, if I was to turn this all the way to the left here, we get something like this. All right, and if I turn it all the way to the right, you're gonna hear a very different character into the sound. So to the right is a much more scooped uh, mid setting, meaning that there's less, uh, much less mids in the um, in the sound. So typically, I mean, unless I'm you know doing a little Metallica thing or something like that, I don't tend to scoop the mids a whole lot. I like some mids in my sound, so I usually keep that eh, sort of about here, uh, roughly. And these things kind of change, you know, depending on if I'm running any other pedals or the amp that I'm running into or or whatever. Those are the basic controls. So I'll run through what the tone control sounds like too. Um, I'll turn that all the way down. And then all the way up, be pretty bright. So again, I like a little bit of brightness from this pedal, but not too much. So I tend to run it around there. Not much wrong with that right there. Uh, this switch right here, this switch is between two different levels of EQ. So uh, in the setting that I have it on right now, it's in the, um, which one is this? One? There we go. That's the modern setting right there. So the modern setting is just a little bit brighter. It's got a more, uh, more treble in it. If I switch that to the um, to the vintage setting, just a little bit darker. So that's really handy, especially if you're switching between a couple of different amplifiers. Uh, for example, my two main amps are a Fender Hot Rod DeVille um, and a Vox AC30. A Vox AC30 is typically a much brighter amp. So with the Fender, I tend to keep it here in the up position, which is that brighter sound. But on the 
Vox, which is a much brighter amplifier, and you'll get a you know a different sound. Um, I'm also you know if I'm trying to do a rhythm guitar part and I don't want it to poke through the mix quite as much. I'm like, something like that. It'll kind of sit in the mix a little bit more versus this one right here will really kind of peek through. All right, uh, one other switch that we have on here, this is a gain boost switch. Now this is not so much a volume boost. If you just see the you know, uh, boost written underneath there, you might think, oh, that's a volume boost. It'll make it louder. It might make it a little bit louder um, because it introduces a lot more gain to the, to the uh, signal, but that's not the, uh, the volume boost is not the main purpose of it. So here it is. I'm going to back the gain off a bit. So now I've got something like this. And then I'll hit that gain boost. Yeah, you can do that kind of thing if you want it to. Um, if you really want to get crazy with it, you know, you're going to get a fair amount of noise with it at this kind of level. Put that line back a but you also get lots of sustain. You know, we, if you need those notes to really ring out for a long, long time, uh, that's a really good setting for that. And to me, the rhythm guitar stuff gets a little mushy, especially if I'm in the vintage setting. So I don't tend to use it too much for that. But if I'm going to do, you know, a big solo or, you know, something like that, and I want a lot of sustain. Whatever. It's great for that. Uh, again, my typical setting, about here usually and then uh, sometimes I'll boost it with like a, maybe a Wampler Tumnus or a um, Analog Man Bad Bob Boost or um, the Earthquake Devices Arrows a couple different things um, and that's about it so just like a couple of, another detail to mention here is that this was Wampler's um, brown sound in a pedal um, meaning that this is this is going after the Eddie Van Halen type sound um, and that's kind of what I use it for. If I'm going for like that 80s rock thing or just that, that heavier rock, uh, this is typically my go-to for that. So, you know, if you're going like that kind of a thing or uh, or even there are different settings in here um, that you can get a lot of those those famous Van Halen type sounds out of it. Um, so that's kind of what it's designed to do. Sometimes I'll use it for that kind of thing, and sometimes I just kind of use it for a general, um, you know, 80s type distortion uh, unit. So that's my go-to distortion unit, and I'll see you guys again real soon with another demo.